Now, these are some of the reasons why your battery bank uh, is not charging. Number one reason is insufficient sunlight. You know that the solar panels generate the energy during the day to store in the battery bank. So when the panels are not facing the sun, they won't be able to, you know, harness enough energy during the day to uh, charge the battery bank. Now, this is a setup of a solar system. Three solar panels connected in series, you know, through a charge controller charging this battery bank. So the panels will harness this, the energy during, during the day when the sun is available, you know, uh, to charge, to fuel this battery bank. Now, when these panels are not facing the sun, because the panels are the generators and they receive their energy solely from the sun. So if they are not facing the sun, it means they won't be able to harness enough energy during the day to charge the battery bank. So when your panels are not receiving sufficient sunlight during the day, they won't be able to, you know, efficiently charge the battery bank. At times, uh, you may have cloudy days. During cloudy days, there's the, the, the intensity of sunshine is not high. So you should know that that day, your solar panels, you know, generating capacity will drop, will be reduced. Why? Because the weather is not clear. It is cloudy, whether rainy days or whatever. So you should, you know, take this, uh, this is one of the reasons why your battery bank may not be charging very well. Then number two reason is that uh, you have dirty or shaded solar panels. When your solar panels are dirty, they are covered with dust or, you know, with leaves, with uh, bed droppings and other things. You know, they won't be able to efficiently generate energy during the day. Also, you have shading. They are shaded by trees, project projected buildings, you know, chimneys, chimneys or other things that are casting shadow on the solar panels during the day. That, those, um, you know, that will make the solar panels not to harness enough energy. Why? Because their cells are being covered. And when the cells of a solar panel is, uh, when the cells are covered, you know, the, the generating capacity of that solar panel will drop. So let's assume in this series connection, one of these panels is shaded. You know, the overall or total uh, production capacity of this, you know, solar setup will reduce. Why? Because one of the panel has been shaded and the energy generation or capacity of that panel has dropped. It will also affect the entire system. So make sure to check your, where you are installing your solar panels to be sure that the, the, the panels are not being shaded and they are not dirty. Your panels should always be clean so that they will be able to receive enough amount of sunshine during the day. Then another thing is uh, 40 solar panels. Now you may have in this connection, one of these solar panels may be faulty. Either the glass is broken or uh, uh, the panel is having a burnt spot or hot spots. If the panel is at one of the panels here is affected, that panel is already a bad panel. The panel is already damaged. So that panel will not be able to generate. So that will also affect the overall uh, generating capacity of the solar panels. So once in a while, you need to carry out maintenance. Uh, you know, you need to carry out maintenance on your solar system. You look at the solar uh, panels, check the solar panels and see if those panels are still, all of those panels are still generating enough energy according to their rated capacity. Then the next one is faulty wiring. Now, if you look at these panels, they are connected in series, uh, negative, positive, negative, positive. So this is a series connection. Now, when you have faulty wiring, at times, some of the wires here may be loose. You have loose wires. And, uh, you know, because of that loose wire, this panel may be disconnected from these other two panels. Or at times, these two panels may be disconnected from this other panel. And they won't be able to send, you know, enough uh, energy to the battery bank. So they are already disconnected. So they are not sending anything. It is, it, at times, it is only this panel that uh, is acuting, that is generating, uh, that the charge controller is sensing. Why? Because maybe some of the cables here are loose or they are burnt. Mostly when you twist cables, you are not using uh, MC4 connectors. So they are, the cables are not firmly tight. They are twisted. That can, you know, affect. At times, those cables will burn. And at times, due to the effects of rain and heat, you know, the, 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 
the cables will be affected. At times, you they, they will melt and, you know, they won't be able to uh, generate anything. Nothing will be able to, the, the voltage and current will not be able to pass through them because they have been disconnected. So you need to look at, you know, your solar connections, the interconnections in your solar array. Look at the connection if they are still firmly connected, if the panels or the panels in your solar setup are still, you know, properly connected. If they are not <coughs> properly connected and you have loose connections, definitely your energy production will drop. Because when you install your solar system, you know what they are pro uh, producing and you know your expected energy production per day. But when the energy production starts dropping, you should know that there's a problem, there's a fault in your solar setup. So you need to take measures to look at you know, the connections, the interconnections between your solar panels to make sure they are still properly connected or firmly connected. And if any wire there is burnt, you know how to, you know, fix the wire. Then another factor is temperature. Temperature can affect, uh, high temperature or low temperature can affect the charging, you know, capability of your battery bank. If a battery is too hot, it will not work or function efficiently or effectively. If a battery also is too cold, it will not also function, you know, effectively. So a high temperature, low tem very low temperature, and very high temperature will always affect, you know, the the the, the functioning uh, state of your battery. So you need to install your battery where it is not exposed to extreme cold or extreme uh, heat. So you need to take that into consideration. Look at the specifications of the manufacturer. The recommended uh, minimum uh, operating uh, temperature and the recommended maximum operating temperature. So install your battery where it will be within the range of the manufacturer so that it can give you a good result. Then another thing is undersized solar panels or controller. Now, <clears throat> if you have your battery bank, and you undersize the solar panels. The effect is that the solar panels will not be able to generate the amount of energy that is needed to be stored in the battery. So, for example, let's assume your daily energy consumption is, uh, let's say, 5 uh, kilowatts. And you are having a solar system of, uh, okay, 5 uh, kilowatt hour. And your solar system is only generating this, uh, your solar array is only generating two kilowatt hour every day. It means <clears throat> this solar system will not be able to efficiently generate five kilowatt to, uh, fuel this battery, to charge this battery up to 100% state of charge. That is the SOC of that battery will not get to 100% every day. Why? Because what you are generating is far less than what you are consuming. What you are consuming is supposed to be lesser than what your panels are generating. What I mean is that uh, your solar panels, what they are generating, the energy that the solar panels are generating should be higher than what you are consuming. When you are consuming uh, more than what you are generating, the battery bank will be affected because it will be difficult for that battery bank to be fully charged so when you undersize your solar panels the solar panels will not be able to uh, effectively charge the battery bank in other words the battery bank capacity is larger than what the solar panels can you know produce so you know that the solar system depends solely on the sun so you have the number of hours that the sun is shining per day so if within that number of hours it, depending on your geographic location, your solar panels cannot efficiently generate the energy that will be stored in the battery bank. Uh, that battery bank will not be fully charged. So the operation or the principle here is that what you are consuming should be lesser than what the panels are producing or what the solar panels are producing should be higher than what you are consuming so that the battery bank will be fully charged every day. Don't consume more than what the solar panel is produced. The, the solar panels are producing. So when you undersize your solar panels, the battery bank will not be fully charged. Also, when the solar charge controller is undersized, 
it is a charger. So for it to effectively charge the battery bank, you need to properly size or choose the size of charge controller that will effectively or efficiently charge the battery bank every day. So when you undersize the charge controller, the charge controller every day will be struggling to charge that battery bank. And because it is undersized, uh, it cannot perform more than its rated capacity. You cannot push it or you cannot force it to operate more than its rated capacity. So you must do a, your, your, your system design. You must uh, properly size your system, size all your solar components, and also choose a charge controller, the size of charge controller that will efficiently charge your battery bank. Then the next one is age of the battery. When the battery is old, when the battery is old, you have used it for many years, that battery may become a dead battery. And at times, a 12-volt battery, when you see a 12-volt battery, at times reading 5 volts or 4 volts, that battery is already a dead battery. What will happen is that if you connect your charge controller or any charging source to that battery, it will not be able to detect the voltage of this battery. For the charge controllers, you know, they are rated 12 volts, 24 volts, 36 volts, and 48 volts. So when you connect this charge controller to the battery bank, you know, the charge controllers, they have their minimum voltage that they can recognize a battery bank. Some of them can recognize the voltage of a battery up to 10 volts, down to 10 volts, 11.5 volts or 11 volts. But when you are having 4 volts, uh, 3 volts or 5 volts, the charge controller will not be able to recognize that battery. So that charge controller will also not be able to efficiently charge the battery. At times, it may be that the battery is also damaged. If you have a damaged battery, the battery uh, will not be fully charged every day. So you'll be having issues with that battery. Then also, when you have a bad charge controller, all charge controllers have charging indicators. So always look at the charging indicator of that charge controller to know if that charge controller is still working. Now, when you connect your solar input to the charge controller, the charge controller is supposed to detect that, you know, it's, it, uh, it, it is receiving input from the solar panels. And also when it is charging the battery, it will also indicate that it is charging the battery. So always look at the uh, charging indicators, the LED indicators on the charge controller, depending on the charge controller, on the type of charge controller you're using. So look at it to see if that charge controller is still working uh, uh, effectively. Then another way you can check is by using a clamp meter, you clamp on one of the terminals, either positive or negative, of uh, the charge controller. That's the connection between the charge controller and the battery bank to check if that charge controller is charging the battery. At times, you may see that voltage is reading on the charge controller, but there is no arms. Arms uh, current is not uh, entering this battery bank. And if there's no current, the battery will not be charging. There are some situations you'll be seeing current here, I mean a voltage, but nothing is, uh, there's no current entering the charge, uh, the battery bank. So that's why you need a clamp meter to check if there is flow of current between the charge controller, uh, from the charge controller to your battery bank to be sure that the charge controller is working very well. Then at times, if those indicators are not showing well, you can disconnect the charge controller from the battery bank. Uh, it's like resetting it. You disconnect it and you reconnect it again. At times, uh, it may work like that if it is still a good uh, charge controller. But remember that when you're disconnecting a charge controller in a solar system, you should first of all disconnect the solar panels from the charge controller before disconnecting the charge controller from your battery. Then when you're connecting, connect the charge controller first to the battery bank before connecting your solar panels. So a bad charge controller uh, can also make a battery bank not to be a uh, fully charged. Then the next one is not uh, properly setting the charging parameters of the charge controller. All charge controllers have their charging parameters. So always look at the manufacturer manual to see how you, uh, you know, enter the settings for that charge controller. Now, if you're using an AGM battery, gel battery, tubular battery, or lithium battery, they have their different charging uh, parameters. So if you're using a lithium battery, you should know that all your settings in the charge controller, those settings should be for, you know, charging of a lithium battery. If you are using a tubular battery, 
you should also go to that charge controller and do your settings to match with the tubular battery. So always look at the charging parameters, the settings on the charge controller through the manufacturer manual because that is a guide. That is what will guide you in properly setting that or installing and setting the charge controller to properly charge your battery. Then the last one here is mismatching of batteries. When you mismatch batteries, you have you have 100 amps here, <coughs> amps hour, and you're connecting it to maybe 200 eh, amps hour. At times, uh, in fact, mismatching of batteries is not good because when you mismatch batteries, you know, the, your, the, the batteries uh, will not be fully charged. What will happen here is that the 100 amps battery will always charge faster than the 200 amps battery. And when the charge controller senses that the 100 amps battery is full, it will stop charging. It will stop ch uh, sending uh, charging current to this battery bank because it is sensing the voltage of the smaller battery. So once that voltage is showing that the smaller battery is full because the smaller battery will charge faster, will be fully charged before the uh, bigger battery. So once the charge controller senses that this 100 amps battery is fully charged, it will not charge the battery bank again. It will not send any uh, charging amps to uh, the charge controller, uh, to the battery bank, sorry. By so doing, this 200 amps battery will never be fully charged. So if you continue this process, you know, it, it will destroy uh, the batteries. And also this 100 amps batteries, it will also be destroyed. So when you connect an inverter to this battery bank, you know, and you switch it on, the inverter is also sensing the voltage of the 100 amps battery. So once the 100 amp battery is fully drained, the inverter will shut down. So when you mismatch batteries, you know, the charging of that batteries, at times they may be, you may be having issues or complications. Another thing you should also always check is the cable link, link uh, from the solar panel to the charge controller. The positive and your net, uh, the negative cable from the solar uh, connection to the charge controller and the positive and negative from the charge controller to the battery bank. So always use a clamp meter to check. If you clamp, if you use a clamp meter on any of these terminals, it will show you. If you put the setting on current to read the amount of current that is flowing through this conductor, and you clamp it, if there is flow of current during the day when the intensity of sun is high, you will know that, you know, the, 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 the current is flowing through, you know, this system. Because at times, this cable also, this connection between the solar panel and the charge controller, at times the cables may be having issues. So if they are having issues, it means nothing will be passing through them to charge the battery bank. Then if you have breakers and uh, DC disconnects, that you are connect, you connect between the uh, solar panel and the charge controller, the charge controller and the battery bank. Always check those things also. If they are bad, nothing will pass through them. So these are some of the things you uh, that can affect the charging of your battery bank. You can you know look at them one after the other. If your battery bank is not charging the way you expected it to charge or you expect it to charge, you should always take these steps. First, go to the solar panels. Check the interconnections. If uh, none of the cable is disconnected, and to check also if none of the panel is bad. If there's a bad panel there, the system will be affected. If any of the panel is disconnected in the series or parallel connection, the system will also be affected. Then go to the cables. Check if the cables are you know still good. You can do a continuity test to see if that cable is still good. You look at your charge controller if it is still okay. Look at the charging uh, indicators, the PV input indicators, if they are still working well. And also use a clamp meter to check between the charge controller and the battery bank if there is flow of charge. Then you look at also the age of the battery and the individual voltage of the battery. If your battery is reading 5 volts, 4 volts is an indication that that battery is already a bad battery. So thank you for watching. See you in my next video.